nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. Hello, viewers, and welcome to another edition of Inbounds with the Oakland Raiders. I'm Mario Bobino, and that clip you just saw is of my guest today when he was kicking up dust at Cal, Giorgio Tavecchio, the starting kicker for the Oakland Raiders. How's it going? I'm wonderful, Mario. Good to see you. Paisan, you know, we've got Italian blood, so he allowed me to do this interview because we got that blood thing going. We're both Italian. Uh, just so they know that you were born in Italy. Then you end up coming out here to the Bay Area, ended up in Moraga, mm -hmm. ended up playing for Coach Macy at Capilindo, the Cougars. Mm -hmm. From there, you end up going to Cal, yep. kicked up dust at Cal. And then from Cal, you end up graduating in political economy. Correct. Okay, and then from there, you know, you was waiting to get drafted, but you didn't get drafted. You ended up with the 49ers as a free agent. Yep. Didn't make it through their camp, which was uh, 2014. 2012. 2012, I'm bad, 2012. Then from 2012, you went to uh, Green Bay. Yeah. Then you went to Detroit. Then you spent three seasons with the Raiders. Yep. Now you finally are a part of the Raiders. I bet a lot of the NFL now would love to have a kicker like you. <laughs> so let's take it back to uh, when you was at Capilundo with Coach Macy. What was it like playing for him and being a kicker for him as well? It was an awesome experience. You know, I grew up, as you said, uh, kind of bouncing around, uh, mostly in Italy at a young age. I grew up playing soccer, so American football to me was a very new experience, and it started very innocently. Uh, but I immediately kind of fell in love with the camaraderie, with the team barbecues, with all my teammates that were my best friends outside the field. So to be able to be a part of that group and contribute, you know, in my own special way was a, a real great first taste of this uh, unbelievable experience. When you went in a state title, I mean, a championship at Capilindo, and then from there, supposedly you had an offer to go as a walk-on to play at UC Davis, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, you wanted to also play football. You had a, a walk-on scholarship to play um, soccer, Correct. but they wouldn't allow you to play uh, football, and you kind of was like, well, okay, well, let me, I, I want to take my chance to somewhere else, and you ended up coming to Cal. How did that come about? It was a whirlwind a senior or spring of my senior year. You know, I, I didn't really get recruited much for football initially. I wasn't really on the map because I was a latecomer to kicking footballs, and I'd always put more emphasis on soccer. And it just started to work out where UC Davis was interested in me as a soccer player. As you mentioned, it was a walk-on opportunity. And I remember visiting Davis, and I had a wonderful time with their soccer team and the coaches, and I made time to go visit with the football coach. I think it was special teams coach at the time. And I said, you know, I'm planning on coming here for soccer anyways. Is there any way I can maybe – walk on or try out and you know he didn't he didn't show me down originally I mean maybe right, the story right, right. the story says that but he said you know we have a full roster right now we have plenty of kickers if you want if you end up coming you can come and try out in the spring so it was maybe a deferred opportunity uh, but at that time I was pretty convinced foot, uh, soccer was going to work out at Davis and the May 28th 401 p.m. of my senior year I graduated high school three four weeks later I got a phone call from an unknown number it was the special teams coach at Cal saying it will ask me to walk on spot if you're interested let us know and you know, I prayed about it for a night, talked to my parents and um, it was an opportunity I just couldn't pass up. Right. So then you end up going to Cal and into the third game you become their starter and then through your Cal career you end up making 75% of your field goal PATs which I think is a very good accomplishment. How did that take place when you end up taking the starter? Because he was a senior at the time, you took a senior position. How did that come about? Mm -hmm. Even that was, I felt like the you know, the stars aligned because that rarely happens where you don't get recruited anywhere and then you end up at a Pac-10 school and you end up playing your first year. Yeah. You know, uh, they actually had recruited another uh, freshman at the time who came in was my class, was a stud and he wow. had won the job and he, he had been competing with the senior at the time uh, for the starting job and I think the freshman won the job in the springtime, uh, excuse me, in the summertime through training camp and I guess they had overkicked a little bit in the summertime so when I showed up fresh the first day of school the ball was really popping off my foot so I ended up playing in the first game on kickoffs and then kind of worked myself into the mix on field goals as I kind of focused more attention on, on kicking footballs because again at, up until that point I was a soccer player that happened to kick footballs and as I made that transition because of this wonderful opportunity that Cal did just opened the door for me I focused all my energy attention on being the best kicker I could be into being a damn good one. Now let's talk about soccer because you grew up playing soccer and we have a lot of people now that's transforming from soccer to football, yeah. especially as kickers. Yeah. How does that translate? 
I mean, I think it's a pretty seamless transition if you look at the biomechanics of it. You know, for all the soccer players, all us Latinos, you know, we right. have we have good rhythm, we we, we have good flow. So that natural swing is already coordinated into the body. So it just takes a little bit of time, you know, maybe a couple weeks, a couple months of uh, dedicated practice to kind of tweak a few things and make sure that you're hitting the ball, you know, high, far, and straight every time. For American football, whereas in soccer you can put different types of spin on it. There's more you know, variety that you can introduce. I'm glad you bring that up because this is really weird. I'm, I'm a youth probation officer and I work mm -hmm. at Juvenile Hall. We got this little football game we do now. Mm -hmm. And now I incorporate it where you get three downs and you can go for a field goal because uh -huh. field, field goals are now very popular. So a lot of kids, you know, American kids, African-Americans, they never played soccer before. Mm -hmm. So they end up trying to kick a field goal and the ball goes wide, right, or to the ground. Yeah. Can you give me a little bit of technique to help the guys who, when they do play, try to kick a field goal? Is there a certain technique or a style you need to use? Because even I tried to kick a field goal. I'm thinking it's very easy, yeah. but I never can get it right. Well, the great ones make it look easy. You know, the guys in the NFL make it look go. easy. So if you can see, you know, when you watch us kickers kick, it's, I guess you could call it soccer style, where we take three steps back away from the ball, two steps to the side, and that gives us a bit of an angle of approach into the ball that allows us to kind of turn our hips and mm. get under the ball with our foot. So you want to imagine your foot kind of like a golf club, like a wedge. You want to hit the ball low with your foot and ankle and knee locked, kind of wedging under the ball, and then from the angle at which you make contact, let your hips just kind of roll through it, and that should give you power. The wedge should give you lift, and hopefully it stays straight. You just helped me. I needed that for me because I try to kick field goals myself now. Now let's talk about you, you come out of Cal and you're doing really well and you, you spend like with three different teams, three seasons with the Raiders and they still don't draft you. So are you thinking now maybe football isn't me? Maybe should I, should I go into political economy? I mean, what was going through your mind? Because what I like about you and your story is perseverance. You stuck with it and now you're one of the best kickers in the NFL. Can you explain what gave you the drive? Because after the preseason, they will let you go. So what were you doing? for the rest of those like eight months. Yeah, well during the fall I would always end up working part time. You know, one year I was a tutor back at Berkeley, another year I worked for uh, like a real estate company. I actually did that a couple of years. Another year I kind of helped coach the Cal Kickers. This past year I was in New York working for a tech company. So I always try to be responsible with, I guess, life outside of football. But deep down, when I really listened to my heart, my heart still wanted to pursue football because, you know, you only get a certain time in life where you can pursue this, you know, before the door is closed. So I took that to heart and, you know, I feel so blessed that I kept getting chances to get called back to teams because even that, you know, to make it all the way to the preseason and training camp and get cut, yes, it's disappointing, but it keeps you in the business. And as a kicker, you realize, you know, time, it, it just might take a little bit longer than other positions where you're in right away because there's so many great kickers out there, you know, and a lot of them get the chance, a lot of them don't. You know, I'm not the only one that had to wait this long. I'm right. sure there's other ones and a lot of other kickers, maybe, you know, potential Hall of Famers that are sitting on a couch somewhere because they never got their chance. So I guess I want to be a story for those guys, you know, not just as a, you know, not bring too much attention to myself, but just realize that there's so many people out there that just need a chance. And I'm, I'm glad you said that because now a lot of people want to make it to their dreams playing the pros, but sometimes things don't go the way they want. Can you tell my viewing audience know why education is so important? Well, education's critical because, you know, I got very lucky. I was very grateful to get called back, but, you know, at any point in time, this journey could be over with football. Now, God willing, it, it'll last a long time. That's what I'm praying for. But to have something you can fall back on, which, you know, sports, you can play your whole life, but you can't play professionally your whole life. If you educate yourself, do well in school, you open up so many doors for yourself that will never be closed throughout your entire life. And that's something that you can always go back to. Two more quick questions, Paisan, two more. One, how much of an influence was Coach Macy at Capilindo, the you know, Capilindo High School for you? Oh, he was huge. You know, him and uh, I want to highlight Mike R. He was our kicking coach, was a punter at Cal, a volunteer guy. Those are great role models, you know, from my first experience in American football. Kind of taught me the ropes to help me understand what it is to be a kicker, what it's like to be a part of a team, what it's like to, you know, sacrifice for your fellow teammates. So I still go and help out at Campo, and, and I still look up to those guys because I owe a lot to them, as I owe a ton to the community, to my right. family, because, right. you know, people are highlighting, you know, my experience, but I want to highlight the people that have help me through this whole this whole journey because I didn't do it by myself. Understood. Last question, why is Play 60 so important to our youth today? Play 60 is critical because there's a, you get uh, you have to have a sound mind and a sound body. So if you're healthy physically, you're eating well, you're staying active, you're exercising, you're going to be healthy physically and that only helps you be even more active and prepared and healthy mentally so you can be smart, do well in school and uh, be a positive contributor to the community. One more quick one, Paisan. Sure. Words of wisdom. Can you leave my viewing audience with any type of words of wisdom? Follow your dreams, enjoy the journey, and uh, respect and be grateful for the people that are in the journey with you because those are the people that matter. Giorgio.
Sergio Tavecchio, your stand-up guy. Thanks for taking time to let us do this interview. Once again, I'm Mario Bobino for another edition of Inbounds with the Oakland Raiders. So long, everybody.